approximately 20 minutes. Uh, and best would be if you leave around five minutes for question. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, hi everybody. I am Marsa Yakubi Juivari. And uh, today I want to talk about the ultra fast dynamical photo excited DNA bases, base pair investigated with a fragment diagonalization linear ironic coupling model. Uh, DNA has a strong absorption in UV region, but the existence of the fast non-radiative decay prevents uh, the DNA from the photo damage. Here, we want to study this photochemical and photophysical process that cause a strong self-protection of the DNA uh, against this photo damage. So if we want to study the DNA, it's better that first of all, we concentrate on a building block of the DNA. So now we want to study the um, uh, cycles guanine, adenine, and thymine, which they are the building block of the DNA. The molecule in the equilibrium situation is in a ground state, but upon the excitation, the molecule gains the energy of the photon and goes to the higher state, which we call the excited state. So the molecule, uh, my, my voice is too high or not? For me, it's okay, better okay. clear than. Uh, okay. okay. So, uh, the molecule in, its, uh, in each excited state has different energy, different electron orientation, and different shape. So, what happens uh, when we have this uh, absorption? We have the electron configuration uh, of the ground state. So, we have if this is our electron configuration, but up in the excitation, for example, this electron gained the energy and we have a new uh, configuration, which this is the excited state configuration. Mathematically speaking, the molecular orbital is a mathematical function which describes the location and the behavior of an electron in a molecule. If we want to name this uh, molecular orbital, we call them, for example, the highest uh, occupied molecular orbital, we call them HOMO, and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, we call them LOMO. Uh, so the other molecular orbital, they, we call them HOMO minus one, HOMO minus two, LOMO plus one, and LOMO plus two, and blah, blah. So, but, and here each circle shows the electron in uh, molecular orbital. So by uh, um, up in the excitation, electron in occupied molecular orbital gain the energy and goes to the unoccupied molecular orbital, which here you can see this is a homo to lomo transition. In total, when we are talking about the excited state, the excited state are divided in two categories. One of them is bright state, that this state are a state that can absorb or emit light. And they, so, for example, a pi pi star state is a kind of the brightest state. And the other category is a dark state that this state cannot absorb or emit, uh, emit uh, a photon or a light. And the n pi star state or pi Rydberg state, they are kind of the a dark state. So now I want to specify what is this n pi star state because I want to, uh, in our conclusion, you can see something about the, this n pi star state. So we want, I told you that we want to study cytosine, adenine, thymine, and guanine. But if, for example, if you take a look to the cytosine, you, here you can see that we have a lone pair of nitrogen and oxygen here. So this lone pair can enter to this transition. So excited state, which arise from this lone pair of the nitrogen or oxygen, we call them dark n pi star state. And specifically, we call them dark n o pi star state or dark n n pi star state. So this is the definition of the dark n pi star state. And the other thing that I want to clarify for you is that I told you that non-radiative de decay uh, prevent the DNA from the photo damage. So what is this non-radiative decay? So I told you that the molecule uh, in equilibrium situation is in a ground state, but upon the excitation, the molecule gained the energy of the photon goes to the excited state. Then this molecule can come back to the 
ground the state by emitting the light. But the other possibility is that this molecule moves in this potential energy surface. But when the molecule reach here, where two potential energy surfaces they touch each other, there's a two possibility of warp molecule. One possibility is to continue to going in this way. The other possibility is to come back to, in a lower um, state, which now here is our ground state. This a process in total, we call them non-radiative decay because there is no radiation. We, we do not see any emit of the photon. And this non-radiative decay happened here, which we call it conical intersection. That uh, the conical intersection is a place that two potential energy surfaces touch each other. For example, here you can see this conical intersection. So in my study, I want to study uh, this non-radiative decay process with a full quantum dynamic approach. What it means? Up to now, um, people use the semi-classical approach to study this excited state behavior of the single base, in which in a semi-classical approach, they are using some initial trajectory. They let this initial trajectory move classically. But by a statistic, how they move, they study the system. But in my case, I want to study with full quantum dynamic approach. It means that I want to describe the molecule with this wave packet. It means that we don't know the exact position of the molecule. And in a quantum dynamic approach, instead of using the Hamiltonian equation of motion, we use the Schrodinger equation. And the, the other difference between the quantum dynamic approach and, and semi-classical approach is that when we are in a semi-classical approach, we just have one molecule, the molecule is moving, but when we move to the uh, quantum dynamic approach, we don't have just one molecule. We should take care of all possible motion of the molecule. For example, here we have a, a water, so we have three different possible motion. So as the number of the atom in a molecule increase, the number of this vibrational mode or possible motion of the atoms in a molecule increase. So computationally, this quantum dynamic approach is high cost for us. Anyway, to run this dynamic, so if we want to run the quantum dynamic approach to study this exactly, to, to study this excited state behavior, we cannot use the quantum dynamic approach for this surface because here it's a strong coupling, we have unharmonicity, and we cannot use the quantum dynamic approach. So instead of this surface, we move to other surface, which we call them diabatic surface. This is adiabatic surface, and this is diabatic surface. The diabatic surface is now you can see it's more or less it's simple, it's two parabola. And so here, it's more, it's a bit uh, simpler for us. So we call them diabetization. Moving from here to here, we call them diabetization. For this study, we are using the linear vibronic coupling Hamiltonian. And what it means, this is our uh, Hamiltonian, linear vibronic coupling Hamiltonian. This is a kinetic term, this is potential term, and this is the coupling. And in linear vibronic coupling Hamiltonian, our coupling is a linear function of the coordinate. Q is a coordinate, and this is the linear function of the coordinate. So the idea is here you can see that when we move a bit, suddenly our potential energy surface change a lot. But here it is more or less, it is not a strong change in a potential. So we need a state. The idea is that we need a state that these states do not change with the coordinate. So we should have some reference state. So what is our reference state? We take the reference state as an adiabatic state in a, a frank condom point. So the idea of this diabetization to, to obtain this diabetic state um, in a term of the adiabatic state in a reference point, which here we um, show it by zero in a frank condom point. So, then we are want to obtain this rotational matrix that give us the diabetic state in term of the adiabatic state. In order to obtain this rotational matrix, we just displace the molecular geometry along each dimension and its normal coordinate, and then we obtain this rotational matrix. When we have this rotational matrix, we can obtain the energy. Uh, and then this coupling which is our linear coupling, we just we can uh, just obtain it from the numerical differentiation. So this is our linear vibronic coupling Hamiltonian. Uh, in my calculation or electronic calculation were performed using Gaussian 16, 
Uh, we use the Cambridge-Trelli uh, functional with 631 plus GDP basis set and a linear vibronic coupling model obtained by diabetization based on maximum overlap criteria is used for a couple electronic state. And for quantum dynamic calculation, we adopted multi-layer, multi-configuration, time-dependent heart, uh, heart rate uh, using quantic package. So let's go to the result. Here you can see the diabetic state population of four single bases of the DNA. By initial, in each case, you can see by initial photo excitation of first bright state that you can see in a green line at time zero, all the population is in the first bright state. But during the time, you can see that in all case, the population is transferred to the dark and pi star state. In a timing, it's transferred to the dark and o pi star state. In a cytosine, again, in an o pi star state. In adenine, it's um, by initial photo excitation of first bright state, it's, mm, the population is transferred to the n, n pi star state. And in a guanine, it's uh, transferred to the red state. But when we want to study the DNA, in a DNA, we just don't have it, just single basis. Because DNA consists of the two strands, that these two strands with around each other. So there are lots of interaction in the DNA. So for, for example, one of these interactions is the base stacking, the two bases on, are on top of each other in a single strand. And the other one is a hydrogen bonding that two bases are in front of each other into a strand, for example, adenine with thymine and guanine with a cytosine. So if we want to study the excited state behavior of the DNA, we cannot just um, concentrate on intrasystem process because the intrasystem process are a process that happen in each single basis separately but also we should take care of the intersystem process. The intersystem process are a process that happen between two bases. For example, the charge transfer, is, charge transfer is a charge migration from it, one basis to another base, is a kind of the intersystem process. So we should also take care of the intersystem process. And DNA is a kind of the multi form system. And uh, if we want to study uh, the multi form system, more or less up to now, they are using the excitonic Hamiltonian, that in this Hamiltonian, uh, they just take care of the intersystem process. But in some system that uh, the decay constant of the intersystem process is more or less equal to the intrasystem process, we cannot uh, ignore the intrasystem process. So in my study, we general, generalize our LVC Hamiltonian to fragment-based diabetization to parameterize a linear vibronic coupling Hamiltonian. The idea of this um, fragment diabetization is that, for example, here, our multi chromosome system contains up to two bases, two chromosome. So we have local excitation on each chromosome. And uh, we use a transition from an occupied molecular orbital of one chromosome to the unoccupied molecular orbital of the other um, chromosome as a charge transfer state. So we use this charge transfer state and local excitation as our reference state of the multi chromosome system. So this is our again our LVC Hamiltonian. This term is a potential term, and this term is a coupling term. So the idea is I have to obtain this uh, rotational matrix. Mathematically speaking, this rotational matrix has this shape. So this S is an overlap matrix between our mm, mm, reference state and uh, adiabatic state of our multi form system. When we obtain this rotational matrix, we can obtain the matrix of the energy that the diagonal one is our diabetic energy and the off diagonal one is a constant coupling between the excited state. So in order to obtain this linear coupling, again, we move a bit, um, along each normal list uh, coordinates. So we obtain just this lambda by numerical differentiation. So let's go to the result. Here, I want to show the result of the adenine timing base pair and guanine cytosine base pair. So in an adenine timing base pair, in adenine timing base pair by initial photo excitation of first brightest state of the timing, we can see in a black line, 
that said during the time the population is transferred just to the NO pi star state of the time and not other state. And if we take a look to the isolated bases, you can see that in isolated base, again, by initial photo excitation of first bright state, the most of the population is transferred to the NO pi star. But the difference is that the amount of population which is transferred to the isolated bases is much more than the base pair. The next one is by initial photo excitation of first brightest state of the adenine, which is LA, the population, about 70% of population is transferred to the NN pi star state of the adenine. And if we take a look to the isolated basis of adenine, again, in adenine, by initial photo excitation of first brightest state, LA, in the first 50 femtosecond, about 90% of population is transferred to the NN pi star. And again, here you can see that the, uh, the amount of population in isolated bases is much more than in a base pair. Then move to the guanine cytosine. In a guanine cytosine, by initial photo excitation of first brightest state of the cytosine, which is pi pi star, you cannot see any transfer of population to the dark and pi star state. But here you see the transfer of population to the charge transfer state, which here the charge transfer state, in the charge transfer state, if guanine is a kind of the donor and the cytosine are an acceptor. So we have a charge migration from guanine to the cytosine. And if we take a look to the isolated base, you can see that in a cytosine, in its isolated basis, cytosine by initial photo excitation of pi pi star, the population is transferred to the NO pi star state. And the last one is the initial photo excitation of first bright state of the guanine, which is LA. Again, you can see that in the first 50 femtosecond, most of the population is transferred just to the charge transfer state here, first of all to LAB, but then all the population is was transferred to the charge transfer state, but in isolated base by initial photo excitation of LA, the population is transferred to the Rydberg state. Not so. In conclusion, the hydrogen bond decreased the population transfer from the bright state to the n pi star state in a base pair in comparison with the single base. And our quantum dynamic calculation shows that. Uh, Inter-system inter process of pi pi star to the charge transfer state is the main deactivation process for a guanine cytosine base pair. But in adenine timing, the intra-system process, pi pi star to n pi star state, is a main deactivation process uh, for adenine timing. And uh, let's thank to my group, Fabrizio, Roberto, James, Harita, and Daniel. And uh, my project is a part of the Light Dynamic Project, which is funded by Marie Curie uh, European Onion. And thanks for your attention.